talk by then. Hello everyone, NexoS58 here, and it is now morning, or afternoon, or whatever for me, but it's the next episode for you. Um, last time we kind of caught John in a vulnerable state. Um, we went to the mall prior to that, but, um, you know, we had an incident with um, John, and we continued on with that, and we had to stop early because my sister was being a butt and forcing me to go to sleep. She had a knife, guys. She had a knife. Terrifying. She didn't actually have a knife. <laughs> but, um, here we are, back in the morning. <clears throat> I'm still really tired because I just woke up and I had, like, two grilled cheese sandwiches for breakfast. Anyways. But this wasn't like my telling PBG one of John's uh, uh, but this wasn't like telling my PBG was one of John's best friends and his roommate. Something was going on with John. PBG was the person most likely to notice. Most likely to worry. Most likely to be able to do something about it. Hold on. I forgot to tell my friends that I was recording in a group chat. Oh boy. Um, crap. I'm sorry, guys. This isn't interesting. I'm sorry that this part isn't interesting. <sighs> okay. Alrighty. I told him. What if I didn't tell him something bad happened? If John never found out, he wasn't going to like it. Ooh. Ooh. I think... Ooh. Ooh, this is a tough choice because John told us not to tell anyone. And here he is like moping, he's gonna silently suffer, and I don't want that to happen, I, but it would be going against his wishes if we do this, oh, I don't want him to suffer, so we're gonna tell PPG, I can't tell any, anybody, I wasn't even supposed to find out, I don't, I don't think, but I want you to be able to take care of him. PBG nodded gravely and bent towards me, cut my hands around his ear. Jack broke. <clears throat> PBG snapped upright, a look of horror on his face. He wasn't in the room last night, now that I think about it. <sighs> oh man, this is not good. You're going to tell him I told you, are you? PBG looked at me, then smiled as if he were holding a baby kitten. He patted the top of my head lightly. Of course not, I'm not stupid. I know you wouldn't want him to know, but thanks for telling me. I grumbled as I straightened my bow, sm smiling in spite of myself. I was glad I could rely on PBG. I'll try to just pretend I noticed it, even if I bring it up. The loss of a pet can be really hard, so I know what he's going through. PBG touched a hand to his neck, suddenly staring into space. Hey! You okay? Sorry? Oh, anyways, I'll make sure to take care of him. Thanks for letting me know. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you're looking out for him. You're a good friend. PBG smiled, then tipped his head back. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I shoved him, giggling, then went back to my desk. Still... I wasn't comfortable just leaving John alone for the day. As Miss Shizuka entered and started taking role, I made up my mind. I had to go check on him. As soon as the bell rang, I shot out of my chair. Anna! Anna! See you later! Don't worry about me, I'll see you after lunch. 
I sped out of the room, evading students pouring into the hall, and turned away from the crowd towards Bluebell House. I passed the signs where John first stood and told me that we were in the same class, then sped walked past the, the field I got lost in that very first day at Asagao. If John was suffering on his own, I wasn't about to sit around and let him. John. John. John, it's me, Hana. We weren't in class today and I was worried, so I came to check up on you. Would you let me in? There was only silence from inside John's room. And suddenly, fear crept into my heart. John! John! You're not, like, sick or anything, right? You haven't done anything rash, right? Hey! John! The door knob turned with a soft click and the door opened. About an inch, I peered into the crack, unable to see anything through walls of John's room. John. Again, there was no response. After a moment's hesitation, I gathered my courage and pushed the door open. <clears throat> John sat huddled in the center of the room, a blanket laid over his shoulders, the afternoon bef before drawn tightly over his body. It looked like he hadn't slept or even brushed his teeth since I saw him last. Even his clothes looked the same, looked to be the same ones he was wearing the day I left him. His jacket smudged with oil from Jacques' gears. I closed the door softly behind me. That was not softly. I sat across from him on the sofa, tucking my legs underneath me. John. His eyes were red and puffy. <clears throat> There's no doubt in my mind that he had been endlessly crying. I'd been, I'd been there before, though not exactly. I knew something of what he was going through. I reached into my backpack and took out a small bottle of water, sliding it over to him. For the first time, John responded to me. He grabbed the bottle and tried to twist the top open. His grip was weak, and after two failed attempts, he stared sadly at the bottle. How weak was he? Had he been eating or drinking at all since yesterday? I twisted the top off the bottle, then handed it back to him. Within a few quick gulps, the bottle was empty. My fears were confirmed. He probably wasn't eating or drinking. He thumped the bottle on the table, the hollow echo sounding loud in the silence of the room. Then, for the first time since I came, came in, he looked at me. I'm going to quit the drama club. Wow, that is... Oh, rash decisions. I've ever seen it. What? Near what? He held up a hand as if to stall my questions, glancing away. I don't understand. Jacques was my star, my queen. He was my everything. I just... I can't go on without him. Hmm. So I might as well quit. Nothing will ever be the same. John quitting the drama club, club was the most ridiculous thing I, I ever heard of. Especially with the depth of of extremes his own drama queen personality could get to. Still, if John set his mind on something, there was little, little I or anyone else could do to dissuade him. I bit my lip and nodded. But after seeing his passion for his work, after finally coming to the conclusion that I wanted to join the play to be with him, I didn't want him to quit. Not after all the hard work he'd gone through. <sighs> oh... Oh, just throwing out the zingers. Not zingers, but like, oh man, this is some painful questioning. Okay, let's look at our, our options here. We told PBG. So John might figure it out somehow. So I think that if we can try, we should get John to still be in the drama club. Because if there is a way for him to fix Jacques, then he would have quit the drama club for nothing. And even if he can't, he still has us, I guess, would be our choice. I'm, I'm going to dissuade John. Even if this was what John decided to do, I knew better than that. He knew better than that. This was a decision made in a moment of Terry Fogg of sadness. It wasn't something he should stick to, or else he would regret, he regret it down the line. So... Hmm. 
I really don't think you should quit. John turned to stare at me blankly, wrapping the sheet around his head so he looked like a nun. Made me want to laugh, but I held it in. You know how much the drama club means to you? And I'm sure Jacques wouldn't want you to quit. Either. I'm sure he'd want you to... He would want... He would be on your shoulder right now, giving you a ton of sass. For the first time, I realized one of the reasons Jacques was so important to John. He balanced out John's personality. Jacques was able to quickly nip John's anxiety in the bud with humor. Refocusing John's thoughts on Jacques Sass instead of letting him descend into the darkness. I knew I couldn't replace Jacques, but maybe... Don't tell me what Jacques would have wanted. How could he... How could you even know? You didn't even like it. What? No, I love Jacques. John, I'm just as sad as you are, as you that he's gone. As soon as it was out of my mouth, I wanted to take it back. No! That wasn't what I meant to say. Mm. Anna. The, warn the warning was clear. I, nod I nodded and hung my head. I messed up there. That was definitely my fault, but all I wanted to do was make it better. John shouldn't leave the drama club. I glanced up at him. He was staring wistfully out the window, the clouds having finally parted and letting in some sunlight. The sky reflected in his eyes, an idea suddenly hit me. Wasn't there another option? Hmm. Huh. John heaved a heavy sigh, resuming his dejected state. I wasn't sure how he would take it, but it was worth a try. After all, it was just a suggestion. All he had to do was say no. But, um, John, I was thinking, why don't you just go to the pet store and get an actual bird? One that looks exactly like Jacques. And you can tell everyone they're the same bird, and just pretend everything is the same. John looked at me in surprise, but didn't say anything. I pushed through. I could even go with you if you want. And then you could keep going to the play. You have to. You wouldn't have to quit the drama, drama club, and nobody would will ask bad questions. What do you think? Yeah. Huh. John released something that sounded like laughter, but it wasn't. It definitely wasn't. How could you just suggest a, such a thing, Hannah? Replace my precious Jacques like he's a piece of meat or or an object? Mm. Well, he is an object. He's a computer program, or I guess. Mm. What the fuck is wrong with you? Oh, wow. Whew. Spicy. John slammed his hand on the table. I jumped to my feet, somewhat shaken. Over my dead body, Hannah. I never thought you were this kind of person. I'm glad I found out, though. Oh, no. Did we fuck up? Did we fuck up? I can't believe I almost made you a tree in my play. <laughs> Calm down. It was just a suggestion. If you don't like it, you don't have to do anything about it. Get out of here. This is a sacred space. The likes of you aren't welcome. John glared at me like a pa like a pa like the patriarch of some 1950s family, and I picked up my bag. I was just trying to help. Yeah. Out! I stumbled out into the hallway, the door slamming behind me. As much as I knew he wouldn't like the suggestion, that was no reason for him to reach react the way he did. I was his friend, not an alien in human skin. He should have given me the benefit of the doubt. I should have trusted where, should have trusted where I was coming from. No. I shook my head. Grief did more than make people sad. It made them sensitive, stressed, vile, volatile. Looking back at the months after my mother died, I did my best to contain my emotions, but even then I lashed out. Especially at the people I love the most. John was going through a hard time, and I might have made things worse for him. No longer hungry, I decided I could skip lunch and go straight back to class. I could use the extra time for practice anyways. The next day, John was back in class. I didn't feel confident enough to go up and talk to him. But it was just as well. In sitting in class, he evaded my gaze. It was as if I had physically wounded him by suggesting he to replace Jacques, the very possibility of, of poison to his soul. Luigi dotted up on him, making sure he came to lunch and checking over his homework before he turned it in. Occasionally, he and I made eye contact from across the room. He'd give me a thumbs up. Those were my only indications that John was doing okay. Not at least, but at least John was around. 
even if we weren't talking, that put my mind at ease. The third day after John came back to class, we were all gathered in the cafeteria for lunch. For the first time, John wasn't avoiding my gaze, and everyone was unusually cheery. And Shane said something I never should have said. Hey. John, Jacques hasn't been around for a while. What's up with that? My fork dropped onto my tray. Across the way, PBG spilled half, half his packet of peanuts. I traded looks with him. Uh. Well, I mean, you know, sometimes birds need to migrate for a while. Jacques just went on a little vacation. Migration? You mean what birds do for the winter? It's spring now. Heck, it's almost summer. Jacques' species don't even do that kind of thing. Besides, John scoffed. Well, thank you so so much for telling me what I already know about my own bird. Ooh. Intense music. I think I might want to make this a little bit louder. I'm sorry, everyone. Being stupid. I'm saying that Jacques wants. Uh, uh, sorry, that was John. John, not Shane. I'm saying that Jacques wanted to take a bit of a break, okay? Don't go questioning me just because you're such an elitist British know it all. Oh, 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 spicy. Oh, too spice for me. Oh, God, the spice is real. Oh. That's not what I was doing. It just didn't make any sense. So you thought I was lying? He stood up. He stood abruptly. Even she put a hand on his shoulder. Hey. Hey, dude, calm down. Let's just finish the rest of the meal, eh? I can't believe this. John gathered his tray and stormed out of the room. I watched him go with worry in my heart. He wouldn't want company after that, would he? I turned back to my plate, but PBG cleared his throat. He jerked his head towards the door. Ah, you know that thing you do? Like when you want a notion to someone, but like, you don't want to say anything? It's like, eh. Did he think I should go? But every time I tried to help John with his problems, he completely pushed me away. I didn't want to make him angry again. What should I do? Wow. Whew. Just come one, two, three. Punch me straight in the gut with it. Okay, so, if we give him space, he's just going to simmer and get more more and more salty and probably have a falling out, I feel. And if we go after him, maybe we can help him out. I mean, it sure as shit would let us atone for the sins of the previous day. Um, and, oof, I, I think... I think we're going to go after it. I have my reasons. And I know it might seem wrong now. But I think that we can help him. Even if it doesn't work out that well. Um, I'm um, sorry. I'll be going on ahead. As, as I stood and gathered my things, something like relief crossed the other's faces. Just let him do what he, whatever he needs to. I'm sure you'll help. The others nodded and murmured their support. I smiled. Thanks, guys. Just before I left, Shame grabbed a hold of my arm. Uh. Tell John I'm sorry, too. I will, Shane. Don't worry. As I dumped my tray, I found myself chuckling. Shane and John were more similar than I thought. They always found a way to say, to say just the wrong things at exactly the wrong time. I found John sitting on a bench just outside the cafeteria, gazing into the branches of one of Asagao's many well-maintained trees. He didn't look up as I sat down, and I didn't say anything. Instead, I kept him company, listening to the wind gent gently whistle through the branches. Hmm. I'm sorry about what I said, Hana. Don't worry about it. It's all water under the bridge. Is this too loud? I think that might be too loud. I am going to lower that. Sorry, OBS doesn't have any manual volume. 
things, so yeah. I shouldn't have. I know you're in a rough place. I should have thought more before I suggested it to you. John nodded slowly. Shane says he's sorry. Aw, uh, he doesn't have to be sorry. He's the one who reacted. He just says it was. He just says what it's on his mind, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, it's what I like about him. There wasn't much of either, either of us could say. I wanted to broach the subject of Head Star again, but I wasn't about to destroy the relative peace of this moment. For the first time, Justin, John wasn't mirrored in grief or denial. For the test, first time, he just seemed kind of quiet. I'm sorry I've been so difficult. Hold on. I'm sorry, guys. Maybe. Ah, okay. There we go. Now it's not like you're bleeding. For you. Or for me. I shook my head. The circumstances are trying. Are trying. Honestly. And honestly, you managed to hold yourself together well. He nodded slowly. Then a small smile crossed his lips. Thank you for telling PBG. Uh, I... I didn't... He chuckled softly, and I knew there was no point in denying it. Sorry, I just wanted to make sure someone was looking out for you. You did, and you were looking out for me too. Thank you. With a sigh, he stood up wiggling the creaks out of his legs. I'm heading back to my dorm. Tell Miss Shizuka I wasn't feeling as well as I thought I was. You really shouldn't skip this much class. You already missed a full day. He shrugged. <laughs> it's only school. I'll manage. With a half-hearted wave, he disappeared down the lane to Bluebell House. I frowned as I watched him go. At least, he seemed to be getting better. No, that was hard to say for sure. Sometimes I thought he was doing better, but then sometimes there were regressions. But I guess that was just how the situation went. situations like this went. At least he was self-aware. Self-awareness went a long way when it, comes, when it came to things like this. Yeah, because he did say he was overreacting, kind of. So, at least he can realize that he's kind of been a little too much of a drama queen about this. He's, I mean, not to mean, not to say that things like this don't hurt, because I've seen it happen firsthand, in the exact same way, or at least not exact same, because Nikki is bird did not assumedly explode and turn into a lot of messy parts. When I got to the dorm that evening, exhausted after the tensions of tension of the day, and having to explain to PBAG and Shane why John hadn't come to class, I I all wanted to sit and, and practice my game. But of course, things were never that easy. Ah, oh, you lose. Thanks for playing. Ah, uh, you lose again? Yeah, I moved to this new level of difficulty, and now it's just. It's, you know, I mean, it's way harder. Really? Let me see. I climbed into my bed and sat against the back wall, positioned just right so she could see over my shoulder. Okay, go. I stared at her, not really willing to start playing again. I got the, I got the feeling that my watching me wasn't going to help me get any better. Well, go. With sigh, I restarted the game. The loading screen cleared, and I searched for my first new combos as the game's clock counted down. Three, two, one, go! I started off in the first, uh, first section of pink blocks to the left. No! Oh, there, the blue one! What? What? The blue one on the other side! I'm not entirely sure what she was talking about. I switched to a set of blocks on the other side. Not that one! Oh, and set off a combo anyways. <laughs> Look at you go! I gritted my teeth, looking for more combos, trying desperately, desperately hard to concentrate. Suddenly, my finger slipped off my phone. Mine, mine was bouncing up and down on my mattress, making it diff difficult for me to keep it steady. Mind! Oh, sorry, I'm just so proud of you, Hana! Yahoo! Look at you kicking butt! I frowned. 
there. Where was the combo I was going for? So I just hunted. By the time I found it again, my opponent found theirs. A herd of blocks were dropped by their monsters into my field. I lost the game. It was the fastest game I lost. Wow, that was rough. Wanna go again? I think I noticed some flaws in your technique. No, I think that's enough for tonight. I have homework to do. Aw, if you say so. I set my phone aside. Making a mental note to set aside time for practice with my was it volleyball. My scooted over to the edge of my bed, patting me on the back with two of her famous back-breaking thumbs. Thumps. I really am so proud of you. I know you're going to make history, and I can't wait for it. I smiled in spite of my annoyance. Yeah. I hope so. No problem. Thanks for the thanks for even trying. Yay! Thanks to you, I'm finally close to my beloved Jared. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Why don't you do why don't you do some homework? Mm. Fine if I have to. I'm glad you're feeling better now, huh? Too, Hana. Did you say something? <laughs> nope, not at all. The next day, John stayed for the entire class period. He still looked worse for wear, but a good deal of, p of paler and less cheerful than he was before everything went down. But every but at least he was there here. Shane, ja Shane tapped him on the shoulder at the beginning of class, making a kind of hand say making some kind of hand motions. I didn't get it. it Looks like he was trying to throw a, b a baseball. John motioned back, a slight smile on his face, and, Shine f and Shane finally relaxed, a smile breaking through his unusually cold demeanor. I tried to hide my smile, but couldn't. Miss Shizuka kept glancing at me like I was secretly making fun of her or something. Uh, and that's why the in international government governmental bodies agreed to set aside a decent sum of money in case of, it, of alien attacks. The combination of the XCOM plans and the c c oh, word Maru proved that humans... I was so happy to see him finally recovering that I couldn't could barely keep myself. As soon as class ended, I bound up to John, happy as a clam. Hi. Hi. Before I even had a chance to speak, my request for extra support. Do you mind coming on a walk with me? I feel like I haven't gotten to talk to you in a while, and I kind of miss it. Despite the suddenness of my request, John smiled. Of course I will. I've been meaning to talk to you about something anyways. As we gathered our things and left the class together, it was impossible not to notice my and Shane's leering faces. I stuck a tongue out of both of them, <laughs> then skipped out with John. Mm. I headed out to campus, and where we picked a direction and took off. It was different walking around the academy with John, not worrying about getting to class on time. Or having a particular a particular goal in mind. Buildings that usually look so oppressive in their scale and were oh well crap. Suddenly the academy was beautiful and vast. Despite a relatively small number of students and the handful of buildings that made up the campus, Asagao owned the land around owned the land around for months. The wide rolling spaces outside of the main hub of the school, common areas clean and safe by campus patrols. And that was why so many students felt comfortable resting or eating in the fields nearby. It was kind of like a paradise, wasn't it? John and I walked through one of the fields together, smiling as the wind trussled through our hair. I trussled our hair. I really love it here. Mm. Eh, yeah, it's not bad. The smile slid off my face. John seemed preoccupied, and a cloak of, dif of disappointment fell around me. The beauty had cast a spell on me, and for some reason I expected John to be acting the way- Oh, damn it. Of course, he wouldn't just magically be better. I, of all people, should know that. I wish there was something I could do to help you. You and Jacques were such good friends. You were there for each other when it mattered the most. Anybody with eyes could tell how much you loved the love and friendship you had for each other. No one of you wasn't technically alive. Honestly, I kind of envied it. I wish that could be as I could be as close to someone as you were to Jacques. Really? Really? You weren't you weren't that close with Mai? 
Mine and I are close, but, well, I was kind of hoping we could be that close. I said it! I put my hands over my burning cheeks. John laughed. Well, I'm touched, frankly. No, oh, but really, if you and I could keep spending time together, and I could maybe, maybe make handling your loss a little easier, that would make me so happy. That's super cheesy. You're all cheese, aren't you? No. John laughed heartily. Coming from anybody else, I'm not sure I would believe them. You, Hana. John slipped his hand into mine. I believe you. John held my hand for the rest of the walk, right up until we went our separate ways in front of Primrose. As I watched him leave, I held my hand to my chest. It still had his warmth. I wasn't sure whether John and I stood regard I wasn't sure where John and I stood regarding our for our uh, regarding our feelings for one another. With everything that happened, it didn't seem the time to burden John with questions about where we were at or where was this going. Cer certainly feelings were there, even if we never explicitly said anything about them. But I thought that was just as well. The way things were progressing and the way we felt. There were things that didn't need to be said. At least, not yet. Not now. I was sitting in my room, watching my, with my watching a rather violent show about a group of humans trapped inside a giant, inside giant-sized wall, trying to free themselves from their giant-like enemies. Where they, oh my God, they're watching Attack on Titan. I saw a group of humans trapped, and my immediate thought was like, oh, well, it's probably going to be another U.S. thing, like Avatar, so the dome? And then I saw, like, giant-like enemies, and I said, oh, God, it's Attack on Titan. I would play the theme, but I don't want to get copyrighted. I paused the episode on her computer, rolling her eyes. I can't believe this. Wonderful, great. Go ahead and get the door. I'm sure it's for you. Susan S. and Aversity Rager! Oh! 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 <laughs> God damn it. I knew it was Attack on Titan. I knew it! As my home to the series opening, I hastily crossed to the door and pulled it open. John! John! John stood at my door, a broad grin on his face. Hearing the music, he peered in my room. I drew the door closed behind me and stepped out into the hall. Um, what brings you here? Lightning fast, John grabbed my wrist and dragged me down the hall. Whoop. John dragged me out and off to one side of Prim Primrose House before finally letting me go. I rubbed my wrist and trying to keep a lid on my anger. What was that about? Sorry, I just wanted to make sure we weren't overheard. I thought some more about your proposition. Um, my proposition? <laughs> Plan New Jacques. Oh, point five. Or just point five. <laughs> Get out. Yeah, because I made a reference to it. That's it. Okay. Bye. Nikki heard Attack on Titan, and then she burst through the door. Man, we're just having all kinds of special guests. Playing New Jacques, point five. Why point five? You don't want to know. Anyways, I thought this could be a, a thing, right? I mean, this could totally work. Not really, but maybe. We could totally do the thing. We could do this thing. And then I thought, well, why should we stop there? Jacques, God rest his soul was always the star of any scene he was in. A little scene stealer. He'll, he was a little scene stealer. He was. I'll never be able. It'll never be able. I'll never be able to match, match his God-given charm and charisma. No way, no how. But I could at least get a new bird and teach it all of Juliet's lines in the play. I don't quit the play. The show goes on, and it's a touching homage to, to Jacques, even if nobody knows the truth about what happened. What do you think? He looked at me. Hesitantly, 
very haltingly. I put a hand on the arm. John, don't you think it was it would be easier to get an actual human to play Juliet's role? Of course not. What are you crazy? He patted me on the head. <laughs> Silly Hana, you know nothing of showbiz. But your innocence but it's your innocence that makes you human. Um Anyways, I have decided that you are going to the pet store with me, and you will help me pick out a suitably intelligent replacement for my darling Jacques, God rest his soul. But we have to be sneaky about it. Despite the fact that John made this decision independent of any input from me, I was excited. For the first time, John was looking and acting like himself again. The color was back in his face, and he was joking around in that fast-talking way he usually had. There was no way I could turn him down. Not after the week he had, he had, and not with how much he, I wanted to be around him without Jock's shadow looming heavy over us. Yeah. Of course, I offered before, didn't I? Yeah. Great! Thanks, Hana. John clamped his hands over mine, shaking them fervently. Fervently. Yeah. This will be gr great! Really, really will! You won't regret this at all! Why would I ever regret it? John already, already let go and was heading down the lane. See you later. I'll see you this weekend. We'll take the train to the city. So maybe so maybe you don't wear your uniform. <laughs> of of course not. Did he take me for an idiot? Mai scooted back over on her bunk to make room for me as I entered the room, hiding something sheepishly behind <laughs> her back. What have you got there? Uh... Definitely not a cookie. What's up? How'd it go? Everything good with Mr. Birdman? I think so. I really think so. Chapter 3. Mm, tasty. But as the rest of the week passed, I got more and more worried of John, for John. Hey. hey man, how's the play coming? Oh, uh... Oh, you know, it's, uh... It's coming. We're having some trouble with leads, so... Really? Wasn't Jock supposed to be the lead? Um... Yeah, or, well... It's more like the side characteristics. There's a lot to juggle there. I've been busy. Busy was the least of it. John was loth lethargic. Often spacey and struggled to play pay attention in class. More than once, Shane saved him by whispering an answer when Mr. Suzuki called on him. That and... Hey. So, when when should we all get together and talk about the tournament? This time, actually talk about it. The last few times we got a little too distracted. But Josh challenged me to marionette party, to a marionette party match. I couldn't let my throne be, de be claimed. <laughs> marionette party. I thought it was Nario. I thought it was Nario Party. I thought it was gonna be Nario Party. Yeah, whatever. You don't even hold the throne anymore. Anyways, what, what works for everyone? We should do it this weekend. We should do it this weekend. Uh -huh. yeah, I can do it then. Copacetic. Sounds good to me. <laughs> I've got notes from last time. Just you wait. That had a scent passed around the table until it reached John. I, uh... Well, I... glanced at me, then looked away. Can't really this weekend. I've got lots of stuff for the play. Really? Really? I mean, if you can't... I mean, if you can't, you can't. We should meet sometime soon. The tournament's not far away. Mm. Yeah, neither is the play. Right. They're on the same weekend, aren't they? That's rough. <sighs> um... Take your time, then, but yes, we'll figure something out. I'll come over on Friday, and we can brainstorm, PBG. Sound good? <laughs> yeah, thanks, dude. I felt so bad for John. But it was okay. We would get a new jock once that was over. We'd hopefully have time to practice, and John would start feeling better. And John would start feeling better, and getting his work done. It was just a matter of time. A 
As soon as class was over on Friday, I left my behind, sprinting back to the dorms. So fast, I didn't even have time to check with John about finalizing the plans. I was too excited. I changed into my favorite sweater and green shirt combo, releasing a contented sigh as the soft material encompassed my body. I rubbed my hands across my sweater, humming contentedly. Yes, ago, uniforms were nice, but they could be stiff and starched. The fact that I only really had two had two meant that I had to wear them longer than I liked. It was always an un underrated joy to put on other clothes. John and I were going into the city to find him a new Jacques, and I wasn't and I was ready. In all the time I went to Asagao, I'd have it oh well crap. The slight nerves buzzing in my mind, I sat down and waited and I sat down and waited. I was at volleyball practice, so I had nobody to talk to. I figured John wouldn't take long. I'd literally just seen him in class. Won't be much longer. He was probably on the staircase now. Oh, this is so cute. Where the hell was he? Was I supposed to meet him somewhere? I didn't have his number, so I couldn't call him or go to his dorm and risk missing him on the way. Or Finally, there was a knock at my door. I found forward, happy, re happily relief, happily relief flooding through me. Finally, jump. Oh. PPG stood in front of me, avoiding my eyes. Uh, PPG, what brings you here? Um... John wants you to meet him at the school gates. Okay, is there a reason he couldn't get, come get me there himself? himself? There is, but... Look, Hannah, I don't know what you and John are up to, but please keep him safe. You know how he can be. Mm -hmm. Of course I will. I'm a little confused. Don't worry, just keep an open mind. PPG smiled at me, resting a hand on my shoulder. I straightened under his sudden touch. For some reason, it was un it was comforting, oddly familiar. He nodded at me. It seemed like there was something more more he wanted to, to say or express, but the look on his face told me he wasn't going to do it. With a shrug, he left. I locked my door and followed him outside. Students dawdled here and there, and there on the on the grounds. Much more of them than you than there usually were, because it was a Friday. Nobody felt the usual pressure to go back and finish their homework. No, it was safe to say Asuka was a nation of procrastinators, all needing the fear of God put a, put into them before they sat down for a single assignment. Jesus Christ, that's a little heavy, don't you think, Anna? I hurried to the school gate, praying John had waited long. But when I got there, he was nowhere to be found. There was some weird guy, though, and he looked a, kind of like a porn star. <laughs> he glanced up as I approached and switched directions to wait on the other side of the gate. Where was John? If only he would hurry. <laughs> he was staring at me. Why was he staring at me? I turned around, pretending... Peering back into campus. Nobody came. I was starting to get a little scared. The man took a step towards me, then another, and another. I quailed, hands tightly gripping my purse. Was he gonna rob me? Try to kidnap me? I stared straight ahead, no eye contact. Eye contact would only make it worse, not even looking. Anna! Anna! Malkovich! <laughs> I jumped. <laughs> How do you know my name? The man reached out and touched me, and I shrieked. And I flung my purse into his head. <gasps> Ouch! What the hell, Hannah? Wait, that voice sounds familiar. John, is that you? John rushed a hand over my mouth. It's Malkovich. Do you? I'm un I'm your uncle from Russia. Got it? Why are you pretending to be my uncle? Why are you from Russia? I'm not. John stopped as a small group of students passed, eyeing us warily. Then he leaned closer to me. I stared at the edge of his mustache. Is it glued on? 
I'm not about to have people see me buying a new bird. I've betrayed Jacques enough as it is. I could I couldn't take it if, if everybody knew. Ah A number of problems with almost every single assumption that John made during this decision presents themselves to me. But PPG told me to be open minded. In that case, we should get away from Moscow as soon as possible. John beamed, the edges of his inflated co kofur trembling with cheer. <laughs> Thanks, Anna. I knew you would understand. Oh. Still, it didn't make traveling in public with him any easier. I had to take a compartment with a granny sitting inside, and she spent the entire trip alternating between glares and judgmental sighs. I was pretty certain she thought John was my pimp. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, man. <laughs> oh, my niece, beautiful country, eh? Well, oh, things I put up with for John. Thankfully, it wasn't much longer until we reached the city. John and I disembarked from the train, watching a smattering of curiosity out faces disappear at the subway station. In the city, John wasn't getting started, stared, stared at nearly as much as he was in the countryside. Such people were the norm, it seemed. White bookstore. Mathlunahab. Super veg. Any bit of kitties! <laughs> Simply scarf shop. Seems to be the weirdest place we've visited so far. We left the subway and emerged onto a busy street. Small shops lining the road. Salary men, middle aged mothers. Old men with dogs, children with ro children rollerblading down the ro road, everybody strolled past us, caught up in their own busyness and paying us absolutely no mind. I took a deep breath and smiled, the disgusting gasoline tinted air, small scraps of paper littering the ground, homeless man on the corner of the street with a cardboard sign saying we're, we were all going to hell. Whoa! Sounds more like New York City than it does Japan! Whoa! But to be fair, I have actually seen homeless guys with the cardboard signs saying we're, we're going to hell. The city. It was out of the corner of my eye, but I could have sworn that I wasn't the only one who saw it. <laughs> I love the city. Me too. I can't imagine I can't imagine why a person would live anywhere else. But you're the better in my opinion. There's always just so much going on. I nodded. John glanced quickly around him. Uh. So, uh, what say we find the pet in this pet shop and get the ball roll? Alrighty. Yeah. Yeah. Get in, get out. That's that's how Malkovich does things. Mm. But we just got here, and this is my first time in the city. Years. We don't even know where the pet shop is. Wouldn't it be much fun to explore? So much fun to explore, and no. And no one's gonna even know it's you. I latched to John's sleeve, bouncing up and down like a small child. Please, John, for me. I gave him my best attempt at puppy eyes, reminding myself to practice in the mirror later on. It was a necessary weapon, one worthy of practice. Oh, uh. Do we have to? Yes. Uh. John? <laughs> now he's the one saying, do we have to? Yes. Oh, God. John groaned. Fine, fine, but only until we find a pet shop. Got it? As soon as we see it, we're getting what we came for and going home. Jeez, you're like a mobster. John wiggled his mustache and nodded. Boy! <laughs> John and I had a great time wandering the city. We stopped at, off to get smoothies to drink. We looked like... We looked at statues and took turns mimicking their poses in front of them. At one point, a guy cat called me from his car, and John went full on Malkovich on him, screaming at him 
in that particular accent. Eh, you're going for Mel Melkovich's niece? Melkovich's niece? Do you know what Melkovich had to do to enter this country? You have no prospects. No! John ran at the car and, and, and the man and his friends sped away with tears in their eyes. Jesus Christ! <laughs> My hero. It is what Malkovich does. The hours passed away without me even noticing. John. Oh, John. Uh, Malkovich, look at that. We were just passing by a jewelry store when something in the window, in the shop window caught my eye and I stopped in my tracks. Pressing my nose to the glass, I grinned. There was a string of pearls and, ameth and amethyst forming the meeting point between the two strands. Hmm? Is that something you're interested in? He looked at me critically, then shook his head. Mm. I can't say it so too. Pricked my, pricked my shoulders hunched. I took a deep, long breath. It was okay. He didn't mean it like that. He came out much worse than I intended, I was sure. Oh. Mm. Well, I think it would look good on me. My mother had a necklace just like that. My dad fought it for her as an oh, damn. I stopped, not wanting to spoil the mood, but John raised an eyebrow. Until what? Mm. Never mind. I glanced at the necklace, again at the necklace, this time noticing a price tag next to it. A rock fell to the pit of my stomach. Well, it wasn't meant to be. I moved on from the store. After a second, hey, John hey. followed me. So, what was it? Don't worry about it, it's not important. John leapt in front of me, arms outstretched. Oh, no. Anna, I may not look like it, but I'm a person who values honesty. He thumped his porno chest in front of <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, oh, this is killing me, kind of. How long have we been going for? I actually am really curious. Whoa, 51! Mm, okay, yeah. We're going to rejoin next time. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching. If you liked it, please falcon punch the subscribe button. And Grady hit the like button. And, um... Yeah, next time we'll have Hana probably tell John what happened to her mother. Actually, no, I should just leave it off here. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Next time, 58.